As you said, in the part 5 of this book, you describe key ethics in detail. The new API to make parallel application easier. Have you some advice about it? Some advice about it? Well, <laughs> I would say that uh, to me, there's your program is doing one of two things at any given point in time. Your program is either performing I.O. operations like waiting for the keyboard, waiting for the mouse, or waiting for a file, um, resulting in yeah, networking access, maybe waiting for a result from a database connection, something like that. In which case, I would say your program is I.O. bound. If your program is doing computational work, um, you know, compiling code, spell checking, grammar checking, uh, financial, mathematical calculations, then your program is doing compute bound work. If you look at most computers today, you would see, if you open up Task Manager, that you would have, you know, maybe, well, I know on my computer when I open it up, there's like eight or nine hundred threads on there. And on my dual core machine, it's a dual core machine, that the CPU is busy maybe three percent of the time. So that means 97% of the time, the CPUs in the machine are not being used for anything at all. So that means that all those threads are I.O. bound. They're waiting for some kind of I.O. operation. They're not doing compute bound work. So the parallel framework stuff that's shipping in .NET 4 is really focusing on how to take significant parallel compute bound work that you're doing and how to parallelize it to get it done faster. Uh, my, my problem with that is that most applications are I.O. bound, right? 97% of the time, they're waiting on I.O. So it's certainly nice to make the time when you are compute bound to go faster, but uh, I think that most applications would benefit from better ways of doing I.O. bound operations. Uh, so that's really my power threading library, which uh, some of your viewers will hopefully be familiar with, has this uh, class in it called this async enumerator, which is really about how to, and it's free, the library is completely free to people, yeah. but it's really how to take your I.O. bound operations and how to not block threads when performing them, and then you can have fewer threads in your program, so you're, now you're conserving resources. Fewer threads also makes the garbage collector go faster. And then fewer threads means fewer context switches, so that means they run uh, quicker without being rescheduled as often. And uh, that's, I think, the parallel frameworks didn't really do anything to address I.O. bound operations. So then usually, though, once an I.O. operation completes, then you want to perform some computation on that I.O. that has just come in, parse that buffer of file data or network data. And that's where the parallel framework stuff can really come in. So the two used together, I think, would really allow people to build massively scalable software um, using very little resources and having it run at very high speed. If you look more closely at the parallel framework stuff, particularly the tasks API, which is in the system threading tasks namespace, I think the team really did a great job with that. Um, it makes it very easier for you to go and say, well, here's work I want done, here's work I want done, here's work I want done. They make it really easy and convenient to set up dependencies between those tasks. When, this, when these two pieces of work are complete, then go and spawn this other task over here. So you can get these kind of really cool dependencies worked out uh, with a minimal amount of code. And then all of them get scheduled into the thread pool. The spread, thread pool knows how many CPUs have, you have on the machine, and then it will automatically create that many threads equal to the number of CPUs to scale that work out. So if you're running your program on a dual processor machine or a quad processor machine, it will automatically take advantage of those cores to scale. And uh, I think they did a really great job with that. Um, I would avoid the task wait API. Um, any API that causes a thread to block or wait, I'm always vehemently against. Um, so instead of using the task wait, I would always use the task continue with instead, uh, which means the threads don't block and they keep running and it's a more scalable way of writing your software. I see. And all of this is explained in my book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you, 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 you explain uh, you are against uh, to wait something, you prefer to continue with. Uh, Microsoft have uh, an incubation of technology called Axiom. It's based on uh, asynchronous uh, communication. Uh, have you tried this uh, library? I am not that familiar with Axiom. Okay. Um, I know it's uh, kind of Microsoft's offer to compete with Erlang, right? To, to kind of work with yeah. Erlang, but I know very little about it. 
Uh, so I okay. can't talk too much about it. <laughs> so, my last question. Um, do you think uh, this version of PFX is a success that based on your criteria about performance and design? My point is uh, today a lot of people uh, want to compute on the both CPU and GPU. Today uh, there is only CPU yeah. and for you it's acceptable or can you hope something better to um, uh, uh, compute something sometime on the CPU and sometime on the GPU? Well, I mean, I think we should always be hoping for better, <laughs> right? Um, you know, a little story, I can remember when .NET first came out and uh, I was speaking at a conference in Switzerland, someone, uh, an attendee came up to me and said, it took me 10 years to figure out COM and now everything is changing and I have to start all over again. Uh, and I said, you know, that's the nature of this business. Technology moves fast and you have to embrace every new thing. So um, I'm always hoping for something new and, and better to come around the corner all the time. Uh, I think the GPU certainly has a lot of potential uh, there, for sure. Uh, there's no a good programming model to integrate that in with the rest of the applications today. Uh, well, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of effort spent on trying to improve that programming model to, to say, hey, here's a resource that can do certain things better. We have to make it very easy for people to leverage that resource and integrate that into their existing software. So uh, the Parallel Frameworks team, they're very cautious right now, and I think that's a good thing to do. There's also a lot in the industry at large, not just at Microsoft, but everywhere. Everybody is focusing on this multi-core revolution, and how can we come up with programming languages and programming tools and class libraries and runtimes to make it easier for software developers to leverage these additional cores. And there's lots of experimentation and research that's being done in all those different areas. It's going, to, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. There's going to be a proliferation of new libraries like my own power threading library and the parallel framework stuff and they all have another version of that. And the, <clears throat> The, you know, Axiom might get more, you know, uh, acceptance in the world, who knows. Uh, and then over time, certain things will begin to become, oh, uh, this is the best way. This works well for certain scenarios. And that'll become more well-known. There's transactional memories, another thing that's being worked on. Uh, so I think right now, programmers are going to have to try things. We're going to have to see what works and what doesn't work. We'll have to give feedback. That will cause more iterations to occur. I think it's going to be many years, though, before the parallel problem is solved. Okay. <laughs> and it's very simple. Okay, okay. <laughs> I would like to say uh, thank you very much, Jeffrey. Well, it's my thank pleasure. You. My pleasure. <laughs>